Hey guys, how you doing? It's Coach Scott. Let's go on with what we're with uh, covalent bonds and we're coming almost to the end here. So let's talk about some of those exceptions to the octet rule. So let's remember this. There's three types of ions or molecules that don't follow the octet rule. Number one are ions or molecules with less than an octet. There are some really weird things out there. Ions or molecules with an odd number of electrons. Then ions or molecules with more than a valence, eight valence electrons. And we call that an expanded octet. I did read this little story. A lot of this is uh, uh, theory. And a lot of this is being currently developed. And this is the best information I have to give you at this time. So in two, three, four years, they might change. Physical uh, chemists might say, yep, that's not really how it is. But right now, this is what we got. Okay. So, earlier I gave you three different uh, uh, um, atoms that, sh that we know don't follow the uh, octet rule. Hydrogen, beryllium, and boron. So hydrogen, it doesn't because it only needs two electrons to have a full 1s orbital. That's all it's got available. Beryllium. Now this metal is weird. It can show, it can form molecular compounds. Okay, covalent molecular compounds, other rather than ionic compounds. And if it does form a molecule, it only needs four electrons to be stable. Boron only needs six electrons to be stable. All right, another little weird metal. So there's also some other weird ones out there. You're not going to encounter these very often. These are rare. They're very unstable, very reactive. They go boom, right? And these are ions and are molecules with an odd number of electrons. Nitrogen monoxide would be an example. If you look at its valence, you got five plus six, that's 11. And that's how we would draw it. I mean, it's, it's extremely, extremely, extremely weird, okay? I think they use uh, nitrogen monoxide in like jet fuel or something or rocket fuel. Weird stuff. Now the expanded octets. Again, this is where they're really exploring and it, yeah, it just not doesn't totally make sense. And this could change. This is our current model. So molecules can form some molecules can form more than eight, eight electrons around the central atom. This is called expanded octet. What's going on is these are the bigger molecules and you got the D and the F orbitals that can form bonds and that's what's happening. So if you got phosphorus pentachloride, you're gonna have more than an octet, all right? Phosphorus has 10 electrons around it and we draw it like this. Okay, and again, this sort of explains it. Atoms on the third energy level or higher, they can expand their octets to 10 or 12 electrons. Okay, so let's look at SF6, so, uh, sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, so uh, we would expect sulfur has four valence electrons, six valence electrons, and then uh, fluorine has six. You got six fluorines, or it's got seven, so that's seven times six. We don't want to try, oh yeah, I had, I had the wrong draw on, so we don't want to do that. So let's go to our pen, and let's pick, oh, I don't know, let's go with the red. So, seven, seven times six is 42, plus six, that's 48 electrons. How do we draw that? Sulfur's going to be in the middle. Then we're going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six fluorides around there. Fluoride F. Then we just start adding electrons. And I think you can see that we're going to have a bunch of electrons. And the fluorides each have eight, so that's going to be eight. Eight times six is going to be 48, okay? 
And that's the way that one is. Weird. Just like that. Xenon. Ooh. Ooh. Now we're getting weird here, right? Because we said that Xenon. Xenon. Xenon's a noble gas. Oh, but it's a big noble gas. So it's getting into those D and those F orbitals. So we got xenon um, tetrafluoride, XEF. So that's got mm, eight, eight electrons and then four times seven plus four times seven, seven valences there. And again, fluorine is extremely electronegative, so it can pull some of those deeper electrons from the xenon. Okay, and I think I know this one. I just we're just gonna see that one. So xenon would be in the middle. All right, and then we're going to have four, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to have some lone pair there. It's got to have eight around it. Those are gonna be fluorides, fluoride, and then fluoride. All right. Hopefully you can see that. And then you're going to put the electrons around it. And if you add them all up, it's going to be 8 times uh, 28. 8 times 28 is what, 36. It just works out. There it is. Drew it a whole lot better than me, especially in yellow. It's a stupid color for me to pick. But you can see that there's two lone pair around those, around xenon. So it's expanded. It's got like you know, a bigger octet. Now let's look at boron. Boron uh, trifluoride. And again, you see a commonality. You've got that most electronegative uh, atom out there, fluorine, pulling those electrons away. So boron, mm, that's what, got three valence electrons? It does. Three plus three times, se uh, three times seven seven that's going to be what 24 electrons okay borons in the middle least electronegative one two three draw those around fluorine 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 add your dots dot 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 and then you've got eight 16, 24. So that's going to be our Lewis dot structure for boron trifluoride. And again, boron has less than an octet. So you can, we'll go through these in class. That we'll have some fun with that. We'll look at beryllium chloride. Well, is that the correct Lewis structure for beryllium chloride? No, it's actually false. Doesn't need the two pair. That would actually be a true statement right there. The elements in the first two rows can't have the expanded octets because they don't have the d orbitals to expand into. Okay, and that's really what we're doing. Anyway, we've got more questions. So, guys, there we we introduced ourselves to some of the weird things out there, and there are some exceptions, and that's what makes chemistry fun. We have lots of exceptions and a lot of different things changing. So. Anyway, yeah, uh, luckily there's not very many of them. And in this course, you're not going to encounter them very often. If you do, I'll give you a little hint, like expanded octet or something. Okay, guys, this is Coach Scott saying have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.